Hello, I'm Peter Brimer from Aquatic Lifestyles in New Zealand. We're a pond and water feature design and construction company. Uh, we have a shop and working displays at 32 Belk Road, Tauranga. Now today I'd like to talk to you about algae. Uh, a lot of people don't really understand algae. Algae is basically a simple form of plant. Uh, all it needs to grow is the same thing as the other plants you have, um, sunlight and food. So as spring comes on, of course, if there's enough food there, algae will grow. Now, um, excessive nutrients, um, food for the algae, uh, they will increase your algae to a point where you get an algae bloom. Uh, so you need to keep your nutrients to a minimum. Where do the nutrients come from? They come from decaying matter in your pond and uh, fish waste, uh, converted ammonia from your fish, uh, all produce uh, nitrates. Nitrates are basically a fertilizer, so uh, the algae will do well if it has enough food and enough sunlight, of course. Now, you can get shade your pond a little, but of course, you will want some sunlight for your other plants. Some do well without uh, a lot of sunlight, but uh, water lilies and a lot of other plants, they, they need a, a good amount of sunlight to do well. And of course, so does your algae do well in sunlight. So, uh, th there are ways to reduce nutrients. Uh, one, keep decaying matter out of the pond. Um, keep your fish load down. That's a, that's a big problem with ponds. Uh, the fish load, uh, goldfish especially, they, they breed prolifically and ponds become overstocked very quickly. Um, more fish means more waste, of course, which means more nutrients. Um, so, so keeping your, your fish load down, as well as uh, avoid overfeeding your fish, um, we will look at, at how you should feed your fish in another another video, but, but overstocking and overfeeding certainly uh, increases the nutrients. Um, also, in spring, uh, once people get an algae bloom, they tend to, to, to give their pond a clean out. Now, um, this is a little late to do a clean out. Uh, the problem's already existing. Um, nature's been trying to set up an ecosystem uh, as spring started. And, and all you're going to do is upset all nature's good work. So uh, the best time to clean your pond is uh, near the end of winter before spring when it's still pretty dormant. And uh, that way you get all this, the, this matter out of the pond, all the organic matter that's been building up and not decaying through winter because, of course, your pond's cold. It's a bit like a fridge, so stuff doesn't decay so well. Um, that's, that's been uh, sitting there over winter and accumulating. And as spring comes on, the bacteria gets going on it and it starts to decay and produce nutrients. So the best best time to clean your pond is, is prior to spring. And um, then, of course, the, the, the organic matter is not sitting around waiting to decay and produce those extra nutrients. Um, good way to keep nutrient load down in a pond is to uh, install a pond skimmer unit. Um, in fact, th these are, are really great units. Um, they collect all the leaves and debris, pollens, everything that lands in the pond that's not a rock, basically, floats for, for a certain amount of time. And, and a skimmer will collect that, um, and you can just r r clean out the net, the, uh, the filter mat, uh, very simply. Um, and this keeps a lot of matter out of the pond. Now, um, skimmer, pond skimmer units are, are pretty new to New Zealand. At the stage, we're the only company that, that uh, has them. Um, and we have them and we are uh, providing them, we're selling them because we consider them to be, be a huge advantage to ponds. Um, right, now, uh, keeping decaying matter out, uh, your fish load, that all helps, but you're still going to get nutrients. Um, and of course, uh, as nutrient levels rise, nature's going to try and reduce them. Uh, so uh, as those nitrates get higher, nature's going to say, well, I've got to reduce this, uh, I'm going to use algae because uh, if you don't have enough uh, pond plants or aquatic plants in your pond um, to use up those nutrients, uh, nature will use the only other plant available, which uh, is, is algae. Um, beneficial bacteria living in your pond, that helps a little with, with reducing nutrients, but, but not to a huge degree. Uh, biological filters are helpful because, of course, of the bacteria. Um, Pond plants, aquatic plants, are, are by far your, your best defence against al big algae blooms. Um, I recommend 40 to 60% of, of your pond surface area to be planted. Uh, that's an established pond, of course, um, 
and, and it's not that hard to do if you plant the margins, but but you need to use marginal plants. Uh, water lilies, they're fine, but m most times water lilies are kept in pots. Um, the root system in the water lily can't get out into the water to, to do the, the job of removing the nutrients. Um, a lot of people also plant their uh, marginal aquatic plants or, or submerged plants uh, uh, just as good. But a lot of people plant them, uh, leave them in baskets or pots. Well, but they're not doing the job nature intended them to do. They, they need to get their root system out into the water to remove those nutrients. So um, you need to take them out of baskets and pots, plant them uh, directly in a gravel bed in the, in the pond. Now, um, some people will use the basket and say, well, the roots come out through the, the holes in the basket. That, that's quite true. But um, those little succulent roots uh, 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 get eaten by the fish. So that's going to restrict the plant's ability to remove the nutrients as well as its ability to grow. Uh, if it's in the gravel bed, the root system's completely protected. The, um, they can grow a large root mass, which will uh, remove a large amount of nutrients and toxins from the water. Uh, plants would be your, um, your best filter you can have in a pond. So uh, the other thing people sometimes use is uh, algicides. Algicides are basically a chemical poison that's poisonous to algae, but it's also going to affect your beneficial bacteria. Um, which uh, and in back, the bacteria is very very important in the pond, so uh, it will affect that as well as uh, killing off the algae. Then of course um, you have an al you don't most people don't use them until they get an algae bloom, so then they throw them in the pond. Um, the algae dies off, all this dead algae sinks to the bottom, starts to decay, and all this uh, new new lot of nutrients is leaching out into the water. So what happens? Of course. Nature says, got to get rid of it, and another algae bloom. So then the um, the owner will throw some more algicide in, and the same thing happens again. And so they're getting this deeper and deeper mat of decaying algae, producing more and more nutrients in the bottom of their pond. So their pond starts looking dirty and unsightly, and they still can't get rid of their algae. So um, use nature. Nature's the best way. And um, there, there is one product that, that, that I do recommend using if, if you have a, especially a string algae bloom and you want to help control it a little, uh, and that's barley straw. Now, barley straw uh, can be used uh, in a couple of different ways. Um, you can put small bales of barley straw in the pond. Uh, you can also uh, get a, a concentrated extract of barley straw and use that. Uh, the barley straw, uh, it has to decay before it, it uh, helps with the algae. It's most effective on string algae or blanket weed and it's a biological product so it's, it's totally useless in the winter. Uh, it need, can only be used when the water is warm enough for it to break down. Uh, as it break down, breaks down uh, it does produce a toxin which is a little bit toxic to algae. It's completely harmless to wildlife, fish and everything else and you can't um, overdose with it or anything like that. Um, it's not exactly uh, a cure for an algae bloom. It doesn't normally just wipe algae out, um, but it helps helps to to control its growth a bit. It inhibits its growth. Um, it's it's not an instant fix in any way. It it takes time. It ha you have to dose so, uh, once a week for a period before you will notice a great effect. Um, but it does help to to hold that algae back a bit and sometimes let your plants get away and do their thing. Um, okay, uh, now runoff. Runoff into your pond uh, is not only going to, you know, from the uh, landscape, runoff from the landscape is going to wash not only uh, debris and um, silt and that kind of thing into your pond, it's going to wash in nutrients from decaying matter in the landscape and from fertilizers that's been used on the ground or around your plants and trees, that kind of thing. Uh, all that's going to wash into your pond. And uh, up goes the nutrient load again, of course. So um, if you can pre prevent as much runoff running in as you can, then, then that's certainly going to help. Um, the other thing a lot of people uh, swear by are UV clarifiers. UV clarifiers are basically um, uh, a UVC grade light that the water passes through from your pump 
and it does zap planktonic algae. It, it kills uh, the algae that, that floats around in the water and kills your, uh, turns your water green or, or sometimes uh, off green or it can be a number of colors but most, mostly green. Now as that uh, algae passes through the, la the light uh, it gets killed uh, and it clumps together and can be collected in a filter uh, or it'll settle on the bottom of the pond or whatever. But um, prior to this, it's only a single cell and it will go straight through any filter, so you can't sort of filter it out. Um, UV clarifiers, uh, they are acceptable, um, but you're not really addressing the, the cause of the algae. So um, you will keep your water clear and uh, you will keep it free from planktonic algae. But you, the nutrients are still there, so so the likelihood is that nature will say, oh, I've still got to get rid of these nutrients. So one of the other algae types will, will start to bloom because the food for it is still there. So um, by far your best defense uh, are your plants. Now um, the scientific name for their filtering is phytofiltering. Um, and uh, they do do a fantastic job of filtering. Uh, so um, use your plants. Uh, use circulation and use oxygen production. Now, getting oxygen into the water can either be a waterfall, a fountain, or uh, air pumps with air stones and air diffusers. Um, and uh, you need the circulation to get that oxygen around your pond. Um, there's no point, of course, in getting oxygen into one area of your pond. Uh, I've come across ponds where there's a Lovely waterfall, great oxygen introduced, but the pumps right below the uh, the waterfall. So there's lots of oxygen going in where the waterfall is, but nothing anywhere else. Um, so that oxygen and circulation that helps with uh, algae control because you are increasing your beneficial bacteria uh, load. You're, you're supplying the bacteria with plenty of oxygen, and that bacteria can do its job as well. Okay. Um, now, I think we've uh, we've covered pretty well all of it. Um, okay, thank you for watching. Now, if you have any questions, uh, just put them in the comment box below and uh, I will endeavor to answer all of them. Thank you.